Hello and welcome to Back to Basics. This video is all about getting into a comfortable downward facing dog. So basic stretching preparation to take us into a nice elongated, hugged in, plugged in and organically extending out into our downward facing dog from the feet to the hands. So um, let's take a comfortable seat and we'll start right there. Sitting nice and tall onto the sit bones and letting the top of the head rise up towards the sky. And we'll take three nice, comfortable, grounding breaths together. Inhale, inhaling. And exhaling. And inhaling. And exhaling. Noticing all the layers are falling into place and getting ready for our yoga practice. We'll take one more nice big deep inhale. And exhale. And open the eyes, taking the arms up and over, interlacing the hands, taking the palms up to the sky, bicep towards the ears, pulling the belly button in, sitting nice and tall. And exhale, release the hands all the way back down. And we'll take it up one more time. Take both arms up to the sky and the right elbow bends and we'll take a nice little shoulder stretch, side of the body stretch, a tricep stretch, holding here for a moment and switching to the second side, arms elongated and opposite arm comes down, bending the elbow, Stretching into the tricep, into the side body, into the shoulder. We'll stay one more breath right here. And then exhale, bring it all the way up to the sky and then all the way back down. And stretching the legs forward onto your yoga mat. And having our heels into the mat and our toes up towards the sky. Take the hands underneath the hamstrings and we'll roll down vertebrae by vertebrae, all the way down towards the mat and taking our feet hip widths apart, arms out to the side, right knee in the center, left knee out to the side, warming up the body and kind of opening up the pathways in towards the side, into the hip flexors, lower belly, quads, and bringing it all the way up and over, second side, Inhale and exhale, softening into the side body, maybe finding some places to take an extra breath into. And then gently take your feet flat and bring your legs all the way together, right knee into the chest and extend your left leg all the way out and just hugging that right knee all the way in, plugging the femur and arranging in towards the lower back area, in towards the hips. One more breath and then take the right leg up to the sky, hands around the hamstrings, outstretched leg pose, pushing the hamstrings and the whole femur bone in towards the hands and getting a nice plugged in feeling in towards the hips. One more breath right here and then bending the knee in and switching sides, left knee into the chest, right leg extends forward. Hugging it all the way in, activating the muscles, plugging the left femur in, and then taking the left leg up to the sky, hands around the hamstrings, pressing the hamstrings and the whole leg into the hands, and getting that nice little tug of war and the nice warm up on the large muscles. One more breath, and then exhale, release. Take your knee back down and stretch your arms and your legs opposite direction. 
Let the full body stretch. And gently take your strap. And I think I can reach my strap right here. So we'll take the strap into the right foot and extending it all the way up to the sky. And the strap kind of lands into the center and then sweeping the arms over the head and the foot is up to the sky or maybe even over the nose, full extension and really checking in with the back of the legs and checking in with the side body and hugging the belly all the way in bringing the hands towards the mat or towards the floor behind you, activating and all the way out to the toes. One more breath right here. And exhale, switch sides. Take your left foot into the strap and the right leg comes forward. Hugging everything in towards the midline. Skin to muscle, muscle to bone. Full awareness of hugging in with all the muscles and all the might and then we'll extend organically out from there so it's a nice exchange of energy exhaling stagnation and inhaling nice new fresh energy inhaling and exhaling one more breath right here and exhale take it all the way back down and take the strap to the side and we will not most likely use it for a while from here, take your hands underneath the knees and let's roll all the way up. And from here, we're going to come to standing, a ragdoll and stretching into the back of the legs. I'm going to come to the front of my mat and second toe is forward and your heel is straight back, bending into the knees. Now you can certainly take blocks if you have them and have them for the hands. We're going to inhale long spine and exhale folding so either blocks or no blocks and then we inhale hands maybe touching the mat maybe hands comes underneath the knees and then exhale take it all the way back down and inhale long spine and exhale fold we'll do it two more times nice full flexibility into each and every vertebrae inhale and exhale, taking it all the way back down. Bring the feet all the way together. Step your left foot back and take your knee to the mat for quad stretch. Back knee onto the mat, front knee is over the ankle and we'll come into a nice low lunge. Full quad hamstring stretch. We'll stay right here, low lunge. Inhale and exhale a few more breaths. And tucking the toes under, extending the back leg and step it forward and switch legs. Take your right leg back, take the knee to the mat and come forward in the hips and get a nice big full stretch in towards the right quad, the left hamstrings are most likely feeling some as well and the adductors we're going to focus on front and back since we're all here take it into a nice plugged in downward facing dog one more breath right here and then extend the back knee and step forward for another ragdoll second toe forward feet hip width apart take your hands on each elbow and give yourself a little sway side to side Inhale and exhale. A few breaths right here. Hands to the mat. Step your feet back together and step one foot back and come to feet wide apart pose with your toes forward slightly tucked in and your heels slightly out and that way we get more into the hamstrings and more in towards the lower back we're going to inhale into the spine and look up between the eyebrows and then we're going to exhale and hinge and fold taking the forearms to the mat pressing into all four corners of the feet and then inhale take the hands back onto the mat and give ourselves a couple of shoulder flosses inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale 
out, arching the spine, inhaling and exhaling. We'll do two more. Get some nice, good movement in towards the whole spine. Inhale and exhale. And then gently come over into Skandasana, turning your right toe slightly out, taking your right elbow in towards your right knee and flipping your left toes up to the sky and the left heel is down. And then we turn over to the right side, take the left knee down onto the mat, left hand out to the side, come to a nice wide low lunge crescent twist, slightly bending into that left elbow, shoulder blades down on the back. We'll stay another breath here. And then exhale, bring it back down, take your right elbow into your right knee and then come up and over second side, left elbow into the left knee, checking in with hips with adductors and then flip yourself to the front of the mat, left foot forward, right knee back, take your right hand out to the side and the left arm up and back, bracing the neighborhood into a low lunge, press and twist. Inhale and exhale and gently bring it all the way back down and come back, left elbow, left knee, and then we'll come to feet wide apart and hands flat down and our arms are straight. And then from here, we're gonna lift the belly button all the way up and give ourselves a nice big abdominal curl and come up onto the toes. Starting to get that feeling of hugging the front side of the spine strongly in. And then we'll exhale, bring it back down. And then we'll inhale, come all the way back up, press the toes down, arch your spine to the sky, and exhale, bring it back down. We'll do one more time and really engage the front side by pulling the belly button in, by expanding the back body, by holding the abdominals in, and binding the front body together for a nice good frontal support. And exhale, take it all the way back and hands to the front and feet to the back. And we're gonna step forward because we're not doing downward facing dog quite yet. The second toe is forward and the heels are back. One more rag doll with hands around the elbows. Just getting a nice big full stretch in towards the whole back body as we're holding the front body together. And then exhale, hands down, step your feet together and step your left foot back, take your knee to the mat and we're going to come forward and sink back and come forward and sink back. So we're doing like a low lunge and a runner stretch or Anjasana supported style and Ardha Hanuman, inhale and exhale. We'll do two more right here. Waking up into the back body by holding on to the front body and we'll do one more and then we'll exhale and come forward, tuck the back toes, extend your back knee and lift from your core, step forward and switch legs. Step your right foot back and take your right knee to the mat, come forward and then we'll sink it to the back, heel down, toes up. Come to Anjasana, supportive style, with hands on each side. And come to Ardha Hanuman with your head towards your knee and really tapping into the back side of the leg. And we'll do a few more right here. Inhale and exhale. I think we'll do one more for good measure. Exhale, take it back and inhale, take it forward. Tuck your back toes, extend your back leg and step forward forward fold from here take one block with you and step your left foot back please we'll step the left foot back and come to parsvottanasana pyramid pose and having both feet flat onto the mat maybe that means turning the back foot slightly so that the toes are to the left side and the heel is more to the right side stretching into the back of the to the Achilles and to the calf, back of the leg. Now we have the block. We're gonna flex the front foot and take the, the metatarsals right on the ledge, on the edge of the block. The block is on the um, lowest level, whichever block you have. Pull your right hip back and left hip forward. If you have a half block, you might wanna flip it the other way around. 
I said every block, but I realized that there are many different kinds of blocks. So whichever one works the best for your calf stretch, for your foot stretch. And I'm thinking if you're like me, you can really feel this in the back. You can press into the block if you like. Inhale and exhale. We'll give ourselves another few breaths. And then slowly switch second side, step forward and then We'll take a little grounding fold and then we'll step back with the right foot and lift your left foot and put the block underneath the metatarsals and turn your right heel in and your right toes out and we'll come to another Kars Vottanasana pyramid pose pressing in towards the block with the left foot and grounding in towards the right heel as well right behind you pull the left hip back and your right hip forward Inhale and exhale. We'll do a few more breaths right here. And then we'll slowly take the block away and step forward. And then take your feet hip widths apart and take a little rest with the block and take your hands underneath your feet and press your um, feet into the hands and lift the elbows to the side and take the top of the head towards the mat. And we'll hold it for another two breaths right here. Just want to get the back of the body fully stretched out, nice and long. Inhale and exhale. And then place the hands onto the mat. And we're going to step back to plank pose. So we'll take a big step back and come with your shoulders and your wrists stacked above and below each other. And we're just going to hang out here for a little while and check in with our shoulders and check in with the front support and we might put the knees down or we might have the knees lifted and give ourselves a couple of shoulder push-ups just shoulder push-ups sinking the upper arm bones into the shoulders and then taking it all the way back out inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale and we'll do one more shoulder push-up right here and then put the knees down and then we're going to come all the way onto the belly for a shoulder stretch so take the right arm out and come over onto the right side and stretching into that right shoulder legs can be stacked you can kickstand your left leg if you like give yourself another breath right here and then gently come all the way up and over, second side, left arm out to the side, shoulder stretch, feet together, inhale and exhale. A few more breaths. Stretching into that left shoulder, bicep tendon, chest, and then gently come all the way back up and come to all fours, please. And we're gonna tuck the toes under and do um, a little bit more for the calves. And then we'll come in a little bit more to the upper body and see how it feels to come into down dog from there. So first take your right foot down so your toes are aligned with your knee and your heel sinks down. Now I realize that this could um, it's not for everyone. You might sit on a block, um, you might come up here and do your, maybe this is your stretch. Take where it works for the best for you. Take your arms forward and breathe into the, any of the tight areas on that right calf area. Inhale and exhale. Give yourself a few breaths. Pressing palms down and just sinking down into your calf, into your Achilles. Certainly, that takes a long time to develop and being stretched so fully that the heel can sink down in downward facing dog. Um, but a little bit each and every day goes a really long way. And then, of course, we have to also plug in the core a lot to get into our downward facing dog in a nice supportive way. Let's switch sides right here and take your left foot down and take it all the way. Um, down to the mat if it's possible or maybe you're on a maybe you're on a block or maybe you have blankets stacked getting a nice big full stretch in towards your left Achilles 
left calf, gastric nemius, all of that good stuff in there. Inhale and exhale, a few more breaths. And then gently come back up and we're going to tuck their toes under and stretch their toes and the plantar side of our feet, hands interlaced behind, roll the shoulders up and back and take the top of the head towards the mat and then we're going to lift arms up to the sky, hug the belly in nice and strong and lifting the shoulders away from the ears, belly button plugs in. A few more breaths right here. And then exhale, take your hands down and come to tabletop. Take your right leg back and give yourself a little back and forth into your calf. It's kind of like a preparation down dog, lifting the chest forward over the wrists and then just tapping into that right back of the leg. We'll do one more right here and then we'll sink the right knee down and the left leg comes back and taking it back and forth and back and forth. Inhale and exhale. One more and then come back to tabletop. Arch your spine up to the sky and we'll come into our elephant pose to start with. I'm going to take my knees in a little bit more. Maybe you will too. Tuck the toes under and then we have our feet down and the hands down. So it's not quite a down dog. Um, it is he feet down, hands down. It's more like a forward fold um, elephant version of a down dog where we are super steady into hands and feet. And we are not necessarily elongating the upper and the lower body away from each other. Instead, we're pulling the belly button all the way in and getting a full abdominal curl. We can release the neck and the head, but we are almost levitating off of the mat and at the same time rooting and grounding down. And there should be a nice elongation of the whole spine. So the spine is round right here. We're plugging it in. And then we'll step the feet over to the hands and come to a seat and give ourselves a couple of rolls up and down with um, for our abdominals with a block if you would like to take your block and hold between the hands. Or you can hold your block into your chest, whichever works. We're going to roll down, inhale and exhale and taking the arms up and over and then we roll it all the way back up, reaching the arms forward and up and we'll keep it going arms forward rolling down vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae taking the arms up and over and bringing it back up and rolling up vertebrae by vertebrae arms up to the sky arms forward and rolling it all the way back down inhale and exhale and taking it back up exhaling everything out and inhaling long spine arms forward and bringing it back down inhale and exhale and taking it back up last one rolling it up and then we'll come down halfway and pulse it here and we just pulse it and pulse it and pulse it reaching the arms forward rounding the spine and pulsing and pulsing and pulsing inhale and exhale a few more breaths right here inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale we'll do another 10 here eight more and six more four more and last two and then we'll take it all the way back up and putting the block down to the mat and cross at the ankles and let's stand all the way back up and this time around we'll take our peace fingers around the big toes inhaling long spine exhale fold elbows out to the side inhaling and exhaling stretching the back body hugging the front body 
Take your hands down to the mat. Step back for your downward facing dog. So we are holding that abdominal curl. We are spreading the fingers nice and wide. Second finger forward. And we are holding the belly button in and sinking the heels down towards the mat. Pressing the palms, lifting the upper arm bones and knitting the ribs together. Fully plugged in. All parts plugged all the way in. Inhale and exhale. Feeling the breath of the palms, feeling the breath of the feet and feeling this nice elongation for the whole body, hugging everything in and extending everything organically back out. We'll take one more breath right here and exhale, come down onto your knees and we're going to take the palms together and just rub our palms together. And then we'll just take a little quick talk about the palms too. So we have the four corners of the hands Index knuckle, pinky knuckle, heel of the hand, and heel of the thumb. Those are the four corners. And then we'll just wrap the hands a little bit more. And then we can give ourselves a little finger bending and shaking the hands out. I want to make sure that the feeling in the palms would be really feeling great with your down dog practice. So four corners of the hands are down onto the mat. And then we have the we have the big opening into the palm and that is the one that we want to make sure i'm going to come a little closer we're going to make sure that we have our um here's my hand i think we can see it easier here so we have the heel of the hand we have the knuckles they're all down and the heel of the hand down here so all this is down onto the mat and you can see that there is a little opening into the palm now that we want to have open away from the mat so that our um, so that the wrist, the little um, air wave tunnel that is right here by the carpal tunnel, right there is where we want to have our breath into the palm, hasta banda, right there. And then the fingertips are down, right? So we have some good palm placement in for our downward facing dog. So let's go back to the mat and see how that goes. So we we'll come to tabletop. And we'll spread the fingers nice and wide. Second finger is forward, pinky is out to the mat, and we're gripping the knuckles down, but we are at the same time lifting. Take the knees slightly back, so there's a pull into the lower belly, tuck the toes under, and then from there, squeeze all the muscles of the arms and lift the arms up and away from the mat. Take the gaze to the tip of the nose and towards the belly button, elongate, the whole back body, sinking the heels down, using your abdominals to come into your downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Really, where all poses can move from. We want to make sure that we have that nice hand placement so that our arms are strong and we're not collapsing down into the wrist of the arm and the hand. We'll stay one more breath right here. Full clearance, full spanda, where muscles are hugging in and organic energy is extending out and we're cleaning and clearing all parts of our body by doing our downward facing dog. One more breath right here and then exhale, come up onto the toes and bend the knees and let's come flat onto your back and take a block with you and we'll stretch a little bit into the hips. We're just going to lift the hips up into our bridge pose. So from here, take the block with you, lay down onto your back, please. And from your back, bend your knees in, put your feet flat. And from there, you can take the block on the um, low way or the taller way and come into your Setu Bandha Sarvanjasana. So I highly suggest to Take, lay down first, lift your hips, and then from there, place your block underneath your sacrum. So it's not on the kidney areas. It's on the triangle bony part at the base of your spine. And after all of that hugging forward, after all of that bending forward and, and really plugging the floating ribs and the top of the hips together, we get to have a nice 
full extension out from there. And we'll stay another three breaths right here, inhaling, exhaling, just having a nice time. And gently just letting everything relax, be heavy, stretching the belly out. And then we're gonna take uh, the knee to the chest, but I would like for us to come up on the toes and flip the block down to the lowest level. And we'll come back to the very beginning of the class where we had the knee to the chest. Now this will feel a little differently because we have the block underneath the hips. So it will be more intense. It will be a little deeper. If you don't need that or it doesn't feel comfortable, then by all means, take the block fully away and lay flat onto the mat. One more breath and then take your hands underneath your hamstrings and stretch your right leg up to the sky. A few more breaths right here. And gently bend your knee down. Take your left knee into the chest and the right leg is forward. Spread out your energy to your toes. Take your left leg up to the sky. Spread your toes. Mound of the big toe is up to the sky. We'll do one more breath right here. And then exhale, bend your knee back down and put your feet down, take your block up and away and take the block to the side, arms to the side, feet to the side of the mat, windshield wipers, side to side, just like in the beginning. Just giving ourselves like a just little weaving together of some new ways for the hips to be moving from after um, detailing the components for down dog. Just kind of weaving it together into the hips. And then we have some good muscle memory. How to open the back of the legs, maybe with just a few breaths, maybe with the exact same poses. Maybe we'll do this video over and over again until we feel like the legs and the upper body have caught up into like a nice, solid, firm and plugged in downward facing dog where it just feels like we're lengthening the body and not collapsing down. All about lengthening. And then bring the knees into the chest, hugging everything all the way in. You can even wrap your arms around your legs and take your head up towards your knees, squeeze your ears up, shoulders and ears together. Inhale and exhale. And exhale, release hands underneath the knees. You're going to come to a comfortable seat, crossing the knees. When I started this video, we had a full snowstorm outside and now the sun came out. It's lovely. Um, I hope the sun is shining where you are too. We'll just, when we have an opportunity to sit in the sun, we'll sit in the sun. Let's um, cross the ankles, drop the knees down. If we needed to sit taller up to have the knees below the hips, then we'll sit taller up so that we're not sitting, holding the knees up and tightening the hip flexors after all that work we did of opening everything up for our down dog today. Bring the shoulders away from the ears, sit nice and tall. I hope you feel a nice, light, clear energy around you. We'll sit together and we'll go back to the beginning of class where we took our three breaths together and we do just that again. Pull the elbows back so that your shoulders and your elbows are stuck. Pull the ears back slightly and just rest the palms on your knees. Inhaling three to five breaths. And exhaling three to five counts. Emptying the air out from the belly button and then inhaling three to five counts. And exhaling. One more. Inhaling. Exhaling. 
and exhaling. And gently just sit in this nice new energy that you just created for yourself. We'll take a few moments to sit together. Maybe the body has a message for us after our practice. Maybe it tells us that it felt pretty good and we'll do it again. Maybe it tells us to go and drink a glass of water. Maybe it tells us to practice this a few times a week and we'll just listen to whatever that is for us. And I'll close the practice with Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. We offer out peace to all beings everywhere, peace to our heart, peace to our mind, peace to our body. With this practice, we'll just take all of our energy that we just um, summoned around us and then whatever we don't need to recycle for ourselves, we'll send it out. Palms together in front of the heart. Take a nice inhale. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Thank you so much for joining me and today also Badger for our downward facing dog practice um, and um, Badger does a lot of them and we should be doing them also to stretch out the back and the front of the body every single day. Thank you so much and join me for my next practice and um, visit all the other videos. If there's something that's calling your name, um, let me know how you like it and if there's anything else that you would like to see on this channel. Namaste and thank you.